I genuinely could not wait. I just finished the last video, and I'm already recording this one. I want to show you AV. AV is an extension that makes moving around the visible portion of a buffer very quick, very easy. A lot of people fell in love with it, and so did I. AV is, it has a lot more functionality, but this is the one thing that I use it for. And again, this is going to be a quick little video, but I need to show you AV. Um, let's insert some Emacs Lisp in here. Because, um, yeah, this is going to change the way you look at text editors. Use package AV, ensure T, and um, I guess we have to bind. Um, I like using, hang on, I like using meta S for it. The reason is I use control S for moving by search and meta is to, you know, do AV stuff. And that's about it. You, I don't think you, oh, you forgot the parentheses. There we go. Now we can switch to this buffer. Let's execute this. It's going to install AV. Now what AV does, it's, I could explain it, but it, that would be rather complicated. Actually, let me try. After using AV go to char or character, we are going to be prompted for a single character. Let's say I would like to go to this U here, from here. What I normally would have to do is, you know, use Control N and P. You, I can move forward by Alt F, you know, skipping words and so on and so forth. But I am going to be asked for a character. I'm going to say U, and then all the U's in the visible portion of my buffer will be highlighted, and there will be other letters on top of them. Hitting those letters on my keyboard will move my cursor to the position that I would like to be. As I said, this this sounds complicated. In reality, it happens in a split second. Meta S. I'm going to type in U. Now, as you can see, this U has J and D on top of it. So if I when I type J D, I'm there. This saves me so much time. As I use Emacs, I can move literally everywhere. And that's great. That's the point. You don't need to tediously move with N and P and P and F. You don't need to just search because I could just do underline and I'm there. But what if I wanted to, you know, start at U instead of the last letter of the word E? This is where AV really, really shines. It's very quick, especially if, you know, you're touch typing, you are not looking at your keyboard. That's great, that's the extension for you. It's so quick, so easy to use, very easy to set up. It does have some more functionality, although this is the, the most important part about AV. This is what everyone uses AV for. And I am very, very happy that I was shown uh, how to actually, you know, use AV, or that I was pointed in the right direction. We are now also going, because there is one more thing that I wanted to um, actually show, because I'm slowly getting annoyed by it. We need key bindings to visit and reload our config file. I don't want to have these two open all the time, and you don't either. Not every time you make a tiny change, you need to open this file and you know execute this line, blah blah. That's annoying. Let's get rid of this one, and let's get rid of this window. I'm going to make um, a header config edit reload. This one. Oops, this will be for editing, and we are going to write a Emacs function, or Elisp function, much rather. It's not going to partic be particularly um, difficult. This is one of the easier things you can do. Uh, it will be just a very, very tiny function that I'm going to bind to a key. So, find function, uh, config visit. This is what, I'm pretty sure this is what I called it. It's not going to take in any arguments, it's going to be an interactive function. And all it's going to do is find file, and the file it's looking for is emacsd config.org. That's it. Now set a global key binding for it. I'm going to be using what I use personally, which is control C and E. You know, C for config and E for edit. Kind of makes sense in my opinion. Um, config visit. And that's it. If I did not miss it either. Yeah, config visit. Let's save this. Or let's, I mean, we haven't saved yet. Let's make one to reload as well. And this one I actually use all the time. I use both these functions constantly because, you know, it's convenience. 
Now this one will be a bit, you know, different because instead of visiting a file, we're just going to use the Babel line to load the file. Um, let's call it config reload, no arguments, again, and interactive function. And what's going to call is org babel, I think it's the load file. If I'm mistaken, it's going to tell me, expand file name, the R, what we are going to be passing in is this, emacsd, and it's called config.org. And all again, just a global key binding. Um, I'm going to be using, you probably already figured what, I, what the key binding is, control C, control R, or control C, R, C for config, R for reload. Easy to remember, config reload, and close, the, close up the parentheses, let's save this, and for the last time in our lives we are going to go to initl, I'm not going to miss doing this, ah, it's not even open, nice, um, initl, let's execute this line, it seems to have all worked, let's kill this buffer, let's kill this buffer, g to update the buffer list, and if we do control ce, we are in our config, if we do control CR, it's going to load this file, beautiful. That's done. I actually wanted to make a video on writing functions, but these two are, you know, they are pretty useful. I kind of wanted to show you this. There is another very cool extension that I found, and I kind of want to share it with you. So let me, it's called Rainbow. Now this is not um, some, you know, you know, with a name like Rainbow, what could it possibly be? Let me just show you. Every time you... This is mostly going to be useful for those of you who are into web development or possibly game design. Every time Emacs encounters a hexadecimal color code, it's going to set the background of it to this very color. Uh, I guess this is all it does. I mean, I haven't seen it do anything else. It's tiny. But it's really, really nice, and I don't really you work with hex codes much, but when I do and I encounter one, I always go online and check it out. Like if it's some non, you know, not very useful one, uh, or not one that you really um, see often. That's all it is. That's all you need to enable it. Let's reload our configuration file with Control C R. And I just messed everything up, didn't I? Where is the screen? What is happening? Is this is this fine now? Why am I like this? Okay, so that's it. Now if we encounter a color code like this, it does not work in order mode. Okay, but it, it does work in every other mode. So so don't don't worry about it. Um, actually, I want to show it to you. Let's close this. Let's go to scratch buffer, and it doesn't seem to work. What? Oh, it wasn't installed. Oh, I forgot to I forgot to reload. My bad. So yeah, that's about it. That's that's all I wanted to show you. Thank you for watching. And for the next video, we are going to go. Uh, we are going to go pretty deep. Stay tuned. Thank you. And bye bye.